for leading us this morning. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah. Well, here we go. A little bit different of a service this morning. Uh, if you may have noticed, our senior pastor, Pastor John Kobler, he is attending with us today. He's going to be sharing uh, a word with you probably in about 10 minutes or so. But before then, um, we as, as a family uh, have some business to talk about with you. And it's probably going to be harder than I anticipated. So um, would you guys pray with me? Uh, Father God, we're just so thankful for your presence here with us in this place. Even in worship, we could, we could, te- we could, we could sense uh, your presence and your love and your mercy and your grace uh, here inhabiting this place. And so we just want to take a moment to acknowledge that and pray that you would lead us and guide us in the moments ahead, that you would give us ears to hear what you would be speaking to us. Would you give us a vision Uh, that would be representative of what you see? And would you give us open hearts to receive today? Again, nothing less than your very best. Uh, We believe in you. We trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, how many of you guys like taking Band-Aids off slowly or quickly? (laughs) Quickly. Quickly, okay. You guys okay with the Band-Aid getting taken off real quick? It's going to hurt, but it's going to be good. So uh, our announcement is that as your lead pastors, um, we are going to be transitioning out of our lead pastor role here at Living Water in Yelm uh, towards the end of summer. If you guys uh, know anything about our church, a lot of you, as I'm looking around, I see your faces, and I know many of you have been here since we started uh, just over six years ago. It was actually seven years ago that the Lord opened up a huge door for us to come and and plant this church, plant this community of faith. And um, April 1st, 2015, we came on staff at Living Water. Uh, Shortly thereafter, about a year later, we had our first church service, September 11th of 2016 in the community center. As many of you know, it was a complete godsend. Uh, It was one of those things where uh, we knew that God had called us specifically to reach this community and that he wanted us right here in the heart of Yelm. And flash forward six years, we're literally right here in the heart of Yelm, ministering to our community and doing all the things that God has called us to do. About a year ago, um, we went on vacation to Hawaii, the big island. I'll uh, keep him, I'll keep him like concise, don't worry. Yes, and uh, for those of you who don't know, Hawaii was actually uh, my first home away from home. I was in the Marine Corps, it was my first duty station, uh, fell in love with the people and uh, have always had relationship with the islands, whether it's through family, friends, or uh, even our church community. So last year, uh, we went on vacation there, and obviously, you know, all of the COVID stuff was going. We were finally at the place where we could take uh, a little but much needed respite vacation. And the moment I stepped off the plane, I just began to weep. And I didn't really know what was going on. I was like, man, God, like COVID really hit us pretty hard this, uh, this last year and a half. And he's like, no, that's, that's not really what's going on here. Uh, it took a little while for us to discover what he was saying in that moment. But, but he was kind of reigniting our heart for the people in, uh, in the islands of Hawaii. So over the past year, we've been praying, like, God, what are you saying? Uh, many of you know that Sarah and I were coaches with our denomination for other church planners. Uh, so we help our church helps plant other churches, which is who we are. It's what we do, right? Make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. So uh, initially we thought, well, our denomination had just kind of deconstructed our church multiply network and they were reconfiguring it so that it was a national entity, a national work that was going on as opposed to just the West Coast. So we thought, hey, maybe this is an opportunity for us to partner with our Pacific uh, division and help them because there's still churches being planted, but the resources in that district are less than they were before. So we were praying, God, are like you opening up a door to 
you know, do you want us to help? We're, we're big C church people. So if there's another church, other planters that need help, it, are you making a way for us to help other church planters? So we, over the last, uh, over the last year, we've talked to the district supervisor. Um, we've talked to the former district supervisor, some other local church uh, planters and pastors. And we thought, oh, this, this might actually be it, because right now there's three church plants that are taking place, and uh, they're still looking for help. <clears throat> so we thought that that might be the direction, but that we would be staying here. We would just be doing church plant coaching, how we've been doing it with other places, and that's via Zoom and all the other things. But Now, how many of you know that we can plan as much as we can plan, but when God says something, because his plans are infinitely better than the plans that we can concoct on our own. Um, so one of the things within that last year that um, we've been dialoguing with Pastor John and Pastor Fawn, I almost called them uncle and auntie because that's what we call them with our kids. <laughs> um, uh, we've been dialoguing with them like really honestly like press in like please come alongside of us pray with us. And we've been doing that with trusted leaders as well. Just we want nothing more than what the Lord wants. Yeah. And we will not, we are that kind of people, will not move unless God says to do something. Yeah. And we've said this and you probably heard us say it. There are good opportunities all over the place, uh, but we want to seek after what the God opportunities are. Because when it comes to ministry, um, it'll put you through the ringer unless you're called by God yep. to do it because it's only the grace of God that covers you. So uh, this last year, uh, well, actually just a couple months ago, we went back to Hawaii because uh, after talking with our pastors, um, we knew that we had to kind of do like a scouting trip. Like, what, what are you saying, God? So uh, flash forward through a multitude of events. But on April 1st, 2022, uh, we were praying in a specific area within um, within the Big Island, and wasn't hearing a whole lot of anything. As a matter of fact, the the day kind of started out not so good, and uh, I was I was like, let's just call it because I'm I'm not having fun right now. And uh, God said, no, don't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, turn your car around and go up the mountain. So we went up the mountain. Um, a whole slew of things happened. On the way back down, God gave us a picture, a very vibrant picture. Um, we actually saw, and for those of you who've been Hawaii, this is not going to surprise you, but we saw a rainbow. But it would, we would have never seen it had we not gone up the mountain. But the, mount, the, mount, the rainbow that we saw was actually a double rainbow, and the second, the, the lower of the two was actually on the land that we were praying for. So God was opening up our eyes to see some things in the spirit, what we, what we weren't seeing prior to then. <clears throat> Flash forward, um, the following week, we attended a couple different services. Uh, some friends of ours have a church. Uh, we went to the district supervisor's church. And then the very last week, we spent time with some local church leaders uh, because our friends had invited us to have lunch with them. And... Um, they ended up praying for us, and there was a lot that was said, um, shared our story about what God was doing, and, um, and really, really had this sense, well, first and foremost, uh, our friends are, are actual, like, native Hawaiians. They are descendants of King Kamehameha, uh, and there's a, a tradition where when you come to the islands, you're really only welcome unless one of the, one of the natives actually welcome you. That was a that's an old school thing. Like you used to not be able to step foot on the island unless you were told that you could. So um, our friends, they extended a welcome to us, which, which meant a lot because it means that the people were welcoming us. Um, and so we came back and began to dialogue again with Pastor John <clears throat> just about what we think God's doing. Now, before we actually sat down well, as we sat down and had the conversation, one of the things that he said was, hold on, before you tell me the whole story, I, while you guys were gone, there was a day that I had off, and I ran an errand on my way back. I was driving in my truck, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm taking the Sigmunds to Hawaii. And he said, is that right? 
And for, for us in that moment, that was probably the largest confirmation that we needed because even when God calls you to go someplace, it, it's not at the deficit of still holding on to and stewarding relationships. And so, um, so that was extremely important that, that God would have already been telling our pastor that this transition is taking place. Now, I want to connect just a couple of dots really quick because these are important to me and maybe they would be important to you. So April 1st, 2015 was when we came on staff at Living Water to plant Living Water Yelm. Seven years later, April 1st, 2022 was the day that God called us to go up on the mountain. That exact day was the day that our senior pastor heard from the Lord. So like, Seven years. Um, Seven is a a huge number in the Bible when it comes to God's perfection. And we didn't figure all of that out until we started talking about, well, what does transition look like? And God's like, I've I've already got this. So um, obviously there's going to be a lot of questions. Um, There's going to be a a mixed bag of emotions. Um, One of the things that we are so confident of and we're actually prior to uh, prior to figuring all of this out. We took a look at our church and we're like, man, everything is going really, really good. Our leadership team is solid. We've got new families coming in, new faces. We've got a core group of church attenders that have been coming consistently. And like all churches are recovering from COVID. But when we look at our church, we're like, man, like, God's done an amazing work to keep us all together. And we believe it's because this is a church, his church, that is meant to be in the heart of this city and that he's going to continue to build it. Um, I think in times of transition, like right now, um, it's very easy to look around and see things that aren't going the way we think they should go. And when we, when we see it that way, very quickly, fear can come in and cause us to be consumed by all of those things. Whereas in a moment, we can press in and faith in the Lord and who he is and what he said he's gonna do in terms of building his church and him being our father and our protector and all of the things that God declares he is. In those moments when we press in and we press into faith, that's when our eyes begin to see the things that he has promised and how he's at work in and through our lives and through the life of the church. So, um, do you want to do you want to add anything? Um, I think that some of this will come as we do uh, question and answers uh, towards the end. But there's been something that I th- that the Lord has impressed on us very early on when we started this church was that. If either of us weren't here, that this church would still stand. Yeah. Um, and the thing that we learned um, through teaching and through preaching was very much how your faith is your own. Yeah. We're someone you can lean on, and that's not going to change um, because this isn't when we grew up where it's really hard to get a hold of people um, and where you can't video chat or make a phone call or do anything on the internet uh, to get a hold of somebody. And um, I knew it was going to be me. That's why I have Kleenex in my back pocket. Um, But we love you. But we would be doing God a disservice if we didn't do what he called us to do. So, as we already mentioned, we're going to have a few minutes um, after Pastor John comes up and shares uh, from the word with you today. Um, We do love you, church. And even though we may end up being geographically separated, you all are still family. And so, like Sarah said, uh, we're a phone call. We're a video chat away. Um, This is our church family. Living Water has been, always will be. So, that said, Pastor John.
Good morning. If you're like me, you have to be a little bit suspicious of anybody who says God's calling them to Hawaii. <laughs> if they weren't of the caliber and the integrity and the godliness of, of a couple like this. And when that's the case, you have no question that what they're communicating to you is, is really from the heart of God. If we haven't had the opportunity to meet, my name's John, and I've had the privilege of being the lead pastor at Living Water uh, for about eight or nine years. Uh, My wife and I have been hanging around Living Water for 25 years, and if you don't know, Living Water's been in Olympia for 90 years this year. And so the the influence of Living Water has, has seen a few things over the last 90 years, and change is part of that. And um, we do want to take some time and answer some questions um, that you may have. And we're going to invite some of the the leadership team to come and be a part of that with us. But there are a couple things as we process this that um, that I begin to pray for you and pray for this church and pray for the people that are going to be impacted by this. Say, God, what's your heart for for this group of people? And one of the things that I was reminded about was in Acts chapter 20, uh, the Apostle Paul brings the uh, elders from Ephesus together because he's leaving and he, he's probably not going to see him again. And if you read that, two things stand out. Number one, they're convinced it's the will of God for, for Paul to leave. But secondly, they're sad and they weep together upon his departure. And I think that's really important because some, some of you may be new uh, to the Living Water Yelm campus and you're thinking, well, this is an interesting time to show up to a church. And, and it is, but it's also an opportunity for you to watch how we navigate change and how do we navigate hard things. And that's one thing that none of us are immune from. Like it or not, things are going to change. And sometimes those changes are going to be ones that we don't prefer. And what what I love about really examining the heart of God in Scripture is that although sometimes as Christians we, we find it easier to gloss over and get past the pain of it all as quickly as we can, God doesn't have God never says you have to pretend like it's not hard. What he does say is I'll meet you right there in the midst of it. I'll meet you right there in the midst of it. And I spent a lot of the years of my life just trying to pretend like I never felt bad feelings. Probably nobody can relate to that. And just compartmentalizing and thinking that if I'm a good Christian, I'm not going to feel fear. If I'm a good Christian, I'm not going to feel shame. If I'm a good Christian, I'm not going to feel anxiety. And I put all that stuff in in a bucket and said, well, I'm a Christian, so... Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what I feel. And and one day I came to the end of my capacity to compartmentalize that and and realize that God was saying, no, I, I I don't want you to put that behind you. I want you to bring that into the light where I can meet you, restore you, heal you, encourage you. And and that's God's heart for every one of you as well. When I was driving down the road in my truck and Mike and Sarah were in Hawaii and I was, it was one of those Olympia days in, uh, what month was it? April. Remember that day in April when the sun came out? (laughs) Before all of our hopes and dreams were dashed day after day after day for sunshine. I, I was driving down the road, and I can't tell you how deeply spiritual this experience was to be driving down the road in this moment of reflecting and practicing gratitude and thinking about the goodness of God and literally feeling the warmth of the sun coming through the windshield and this whisper from the Lord that said, I'm taking the segments to Hawaii 
and and being flooded with sadness because my wife and I love this couple and their girls and joy that this is God and if it's God it has to be good and so there was this kind of like all the air went out but then in the same moment there was a breath of fresh air that came in as I was just assured that God was in this and I don't need to tell you this but this couple would do anything that the Lord asked them to do and it's not the first time they've left living water and come back so I'm just saying (laughs) you never know some of us have this boomerang relationship But it's not about living water. It's about where God wants us to be, where God wants to use us, where God wants to assign us. And um, and this couple has walked out this process with the utmost integrity and transparency and honor and desire to honor God and care for you and honor the relationship where God has placed them. It's, It's hard, but it's as right as it could possibly be. And as a part of the bigger Living Water family, I hope you know that there are uh, leaders and elders that are standing with you and beside you as as you navigate this individually and together as a community. You're not alone. You've got an incredible leadership team here. Um, When I had the opportunity to sit down with Mike and Sarah and the leadership team, I just looked around the room and thought, "This this is how it's supposed to be because it's going to be hard but there is such a stability and strength because of the people that that they've raised up and god's raised up here um i want to i want to leave you uh well i don't want to leave you but i want to share this really briefly um from psalm 16 as a way not to make any of this easy but to help you see how god might be working in it and through it David writes in Psalm 16, and, uh, and he says this. I'm going to read three verses, verse 5 and 6 first. And David says, The Lord is my chosen portion in my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. And, and what he's describing is, is, in essence, he's saying, God, um, the, the, the territory, the land, Uh, that you give me, whatever it is, is good. And there's no place I'd rather be than rooted and grounded where you've made provision for me to be. And then at the end, he says this, you make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And we don't know exactly the situation that David is in, but it's probably not a good one. He's he's probably not where he wants to be relationally or geographically. And yet it's in the midst of that that he can say, God, wherever you want me to be, that's the best place that I could ever be. And then he, he reveals why he can believe that at the very end when he says, because in your presence is fullness of joy. Because wherever God is, that's where fullness of joy is found. And sometimes where I am isn't where I want to be. Have you ever been there? And yet I'm reminded that when I recognize where he is and plant my feet there. There's no better place I could be. The last thing that I want to I say is um, just a personal story. A couple weeks ago, I went to visit a monastery. Uh, just thinking about career options. <laughs> and... Uh, it was an opportunity to go and have some quiet and uh, pray and walk and talk and read. And there were a lot of different things that were happening. So I was really looking forward to that space. And I was in M- Middle California. 
Uh, it was uh, an area that was um, surrounded with vineyards and walnut groves and fruit trees. And they had eight little rooms that you could come and stay. They were 10 by 12 cinder block with a bed fit for a monk <laughs> and a little bathroom. And that was all that was going on. They, there were people there working the property and you could come and walk and pray and talk and they would just leave you alone. And so one day I was walking and while I was walking, I began to think about all the different things that were going on, uh, the challenges that I was facing and happening in, in my life and my family and in the church. And I was saying, God, and I began to pray, but God, in the midst of it all, you're all I need. You're, you are all that I need. You are all that I need. Because I knew, I knew that's what I should say. And, and really, it's what I believe. And so I had this level of anxiety and this weight that was on my shoulders. And I'm praying, God, you're all that I need. You're all that I need. You're all that I need. And I wasn't really feeling any better. And after a few minutes of that, maybe longer, God stopped me and he said, um, I mean, I didn't hear an audible voice, but the impression on my heart was God saying, I know you believe that I'm all that you need. Your problem is I'm not all that you want. And I just realized so much of my anxiety was in places I wasn't getting what I wanted. People weren't responding to me the way I wanted them to respond. Circumstances weren't playing out the way I thought they should play out. But the Lord reminded me, but maybe what I want for you isn't what you want for you. But if I am what you want, you will always be satisfied. And so I began to pray, Lord, you're all I want. And every time I prayed it inside, I'm thinking, I want that to be true, but it's not yet. But whatever you have to do in my heart, do what you need to do so that from my toes to the top of my head, I can I can know that you are all that I want because in your presence is fullness of joy. And then I can say, whatever lot you give me is good because you are with me. And I want to say to you, Living Water Young, there has been so many seeds of the gospel of Jesus Christ that has been planted because of the influence of this church over the last six years that the best days for this church are still to come and that God is not done with you he's not done with pastor Mike and pastor Sarah he's he's not done with the work that's happening here and the question as you process and navigate that I challenge you with is number one how you're really doing and bring that to the Lord and then where is God leading and taking you and doing in you in this season? Because that work, I promise, is good. So, there it is. We, we want to, you may be asking some practical questions. I want to answer a couple of those and then invite the, the, some of the leaders and Pastor Mike and Sarah to come back. Um, number one, like, how do we move forward? Uh, the way that we will move forward is that um, Living Water, led by Pastor Fawn and myself, along with our church council, we, we are on a search to discern um, who God wants to be the next lead pastor here at the Yelm campus. The Yelm leadership team will be involved in that process because they're, they're instrumental and key to discerning and understanding the work that God's doing here and the culture and the people that's unique to the Yelm campus. Um, so, so we are in that process right now. Um, pastor Mike and Sarah will be here for the last time preaching on July 31st, and then on August 7th, um, we'll be there kind of send-off Sunday. Uh, that's, uh, that Sunday on the 7th is also an all-campus barbecue at the Olympia campus, and we'd love to see everybody there, and we are going to take some time there to, to celebrate them and 
um, what God's doing in their lives. So you're all welcome to be a part of that. The, uh, the interim period of time between that and when uh, a new uh, lead pastors are announced, we'll have coverage for all the things that happen to make the church uh, move forward uh, with the leadership team, partner with leaders from the Olympia campus, probably have some guest speakers along with some of the people that you already know and love. And as that process moves forward, we'll, we'll keep you in the loop so that you know what's going on. Um, the, some of the leaders that are going to come would be great people for you to communicate with that are here locally when you have questions or comments and um, try to make sure that everybody's voice is heard and understood as we move forward together. So those are some of the nuts and bolts uh, moving forward. Uh, let's invite Pastor Mike and Sarah and Sam and Jeff, if you guys would all come to the platform. That's way too close. I don't know why. Okay. And I assume, is this streaming online? Yes. Okay. So if, if you are online, we'll, if there are, for whatever questions there are, we'll try to repeat those so that um, everybody online can, can hear what's going on. Um, I don't know how, what kind of questions you may have. It's a lot of information to process in a short period of time. So like I said, this isn't the only opportunity for you to ask questions, but we do want to be really transparent uh, throughout this process, so we want to at least start there. Um, we won't take a long time, but uh, it seemed like the right thing to do, and then um, and then we'll wrap up our time together. So, if you have a question, if you want to uh, raise your hand or stand up or yell or shout or uh, however you want to do that, we'd love to hear from you. If you have anything that feels like relevant right now, anybody? The really good looking ball guy in the front. You're just saying that to the uh, I'd love to hear from Sam and Jeff uh, what their feelings are about moving forward. Where is it, what their, their faith in the Lord? Mm -hmm. Or is that? Yeah. The question from uh, Joey was how are you guys feeling? You've had a little bit more time to process this. Okay, yeah, I apologize. Uh, we have had some weeks of advance notice, so uh, we've talked a lot about what we were created for. We were created for relationship with God and relationship with others. So I recognize that I've had time to process this, so um, I apologize I'm not in the, the same place as you are anymore, but that's, that's a good thing. So, you know, my first question was, did you hear from the Lord? And I'm afraid of lightning. Um, if you have an hour and a half and Mike <laughs> tells you the whole story of how many fleeces he laid out uh, for the Lord, I'm, I'm not pretentious enough to challenge God that many times, but um, I'm really confident that he heard from the Lord. And I, I actually had a, a, a conversation with Joey a, a while ago that kind of took me by surprise with my response, but you know, they've been going through career changes, life changes, and he said something like, um, you know, uh, what would happen if I didn't do what uh, Jesus told me? And I, I responded quickly, um, if you didn't do what Jesus told you, you're no good to us. And uh, what I have so appreciated about Living Water um, here and with Pastor Mike and Sarah has been that it's a, a church where it isn't built around personality, which is a really weak church. You've heard over and over again that we make disciples that make disciples, and we're not a church of spectators. You are the church, but they have humbly come alongside of us and 
you know, God has given me uh, both um, a, a, a peace and just immense gratitude for this season of being able to go shoulder to shoulder and build deep relationships with these people. And that part is painful. That's one thing. Because we're built for relationship, um, it hurts um, to not have them right here, but they didn't die, so um, <laughs> they, they are going to be around. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for that. But the other part is that I had a conversation with the Lord and said, they heard from the Lord, this is the right thing, God, you're gonna do it. And God said, okay, so you're gonna move forward, but are you trudging? Mm. Well, um, kind of. He said, can you be excited? And uh, that really spoke to my heart, and it's like, okay, God, um, I don't wanna be like um, you know, the non-Caleb and Joshua spies um, that says there are giants in the, the land. Um, I want to be like Joshua and Caleb and be excited about what God is going to do. And he's done that. So I'm a little bit ahead of you, but I hope that I can plant a seed. God has really given me um, a vision of excitement for not only what God is going to do through you, uh, but also what God is doing uh, through Pastor uh, Mike and uh, Sarah, that um, we're going to be praying for them and the world is going to be changed and eternity is going to be more exciting because of the, the hearts that are captured. So, like I said, I'm a little bit a ahead of you in terms of the Lord has had some time to take me out of the, the grieving because of separation and relationship. But I have a real excitement for what God is going to do through this church. Yeah. That's good, John. Well, and I have had time to process it, and, and kind of the joke in the leadership is, is that when people come to me and say, hey, I need to talk to you, I go the other way now because I'm really tired of people saying, hey, I need to talk to you, and they're moving. Um, so so two, things, two things really came to mind is, is that um, when I was a kid, I got the opportunity to work with horses. And one of the things that you should know about horses is they're wild animals. And when you were gonna, as my dad would say, doctor an animal, we would hobble them. And in the Bible, they did the exact same thing. When they were up against something that was a huge force coming at you, the, the warriors, as scared as they were, would hobble themselves and say, I'm here, I'm in it. And I want you to know that I'm hobbled and I'm here and I'm in it with you guys. I, we are going to go through a lot of transitions. There's going to be a lot of changes. I am so excited, with the exception of losing two of my best friends, I am so excited for what God has a, to do in their lives and what God has to do in living water. And some of you remember when I preached and I said, God is doing a new thing. You remember that? And I told you that God completely changed my message. Think about that message and go back and listen to it because here's the deal. This is not a time to go, well, I was thinking about leaving the church anyways. What this is a time to do is to hobble in and to become leaders with us and to join with us because we believe that we are called to yell. We believe we are called to yell. And we believe that God has a, a very strong calling on this community and that you guys are all part of it. So you're going to go through a range of emotions. I told Joey I didn't want to talk to him for a week. <laughs> I did. I said, um, I love you. Don't talk to me for a week. And then, you know, Mike, yeah, th there was other responses that I had for Mike. But, but I, 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 uh, I, I just want you to know that, yes, we've had time to process it. There is going to be natural processes that you're gonna go through, but one that I want you to recognize is when the enemy sneaks in and says it's time for me to jet, it's the enemy. Yeah. This is your home. This is where you belong. And God is going to place someone. Now, one of these is not like the other if you look at our shoes, okay? <clears throat> and, 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 for, and, and, and for once, it has nothing to do with being follically challenged. So uh, we, we, are, we are very unique in, in our body. And, and the one thing that I can say in knowing Pastor John is, is that I have extreme trust in him. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you to have the same. When we talk about our lead pastor looking for a pastor, 
That doesn't mean that the leadership of Yelm isn't going to have an influence on what that looks like, but what it means is I trust him with my life. Yeah. I trust him with my spiritual life. I'm asking you to do the same. There's going to be a lot of questions, and you know most of us on leadership, and you're more than welcome to come and cry and be angry and go through all that and then say these words, how can I help? That's good. That's good. Those are the words. Those are what we're looking for. So I've gone through every emotion. I kind of turned and looked at everybody when he made the announcement, and I went, ooh, been there, been there. I was looking at Patricia crying. I've been there. You know, going through all the ranges of emotions, and those are very normal emotions. But we as, uh, as your spiritual leaders ask you to recognize when the enemy is creeping in and come against it. And if you need help, our phone numbers are listed, and we will pray with you, and we will pray for you, and we will come against it with you. Because we believe Living Water Yelm is here for a reason. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Anything you guys want to add? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, just so that you know, we are not uh, the tactic. Um, I know that sometimes when people say um, that I'm moving on or it's a new season, um, there, sense, there tends to be a little bit of a, a step back or a detachment, and um, we're still in it. Our feet are still here. Um, our, our hearts, hearts will be here for a while. <laughs> um. In the military, uh, usually when people are on their way out, there's a tendency of either them to finish really well or to hit the quick releases on their packs and let other people figure it out. Um, I guess what Sarah is probably trying to say is that until we are truly like on a flight we are here to do what god has called us to do here we have not been released in this moment to be elsewhere so um, we are here and we want to transition well um, and you know for the last for the last six years we we've we've taught you guys about faith and encouraged you to take those steps of faith and as has already been mentioned now isn't the time to do other than what God desires for you. But it's gonna take that faith that we've talked about for the last six, seven years to put that into motion, and it's gotta be your own. We're here to support, the leadership team is here to support, the Olympia and Lacey campus. Uh, we're all in this together, so if you need anything, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. There was an encouragement for those of you online uh, to really, really say, God, what do you want to do through us in this season and not pull back? And what, it's a great encouraging word. And, and I just want to assure you on behalf of the leadership that our vision is still clear. We still have a vision for this community. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, Mike and I have talked about it. I grew up, I tell people I was born in a pew. But I've gone through many of these, and the differences between doing it well, and if you guys remember again when I preached, I said a hero does what? He finishes well. Mm -hmm. The difference is that we, we believe that we are, we're not done, and we are going to finish this well. So um, we're in it with you guys, and we're in it with Mike and Sarah. I'm going to see them in September. I'm going to Joey's in December. So, I, I, I mean, we're in it for you guys, for this church, for this community, and for Jesus to, to reign. That's good. I think um, we will, can I pray for us? Yeah, did, was there anybody that had one last question? Did I miss one? I'm so sorry. <coughs> Go for it. Hmm. Oh, wow. 
and Jan yeah. Smith, yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> that's just wisdom that's just yeah. wisdom yeah i think for those of you online that was an encouragement that god has a plan for mike and sarah and god has a plan for living water yum as well yeah and and we can go visit whenever we want to so yep. praise god and this, this is a little bit dangerous because i appreciate uh pastor john's humility um but i've had the privilege of uh, working with him in other areas for a very long time, longer than I care to admit. And I, I mentioned the Lord was speaking about uh, Caleb and Joshua, uh, you know, trusting God to give them the promised land and that, that faith. Um, but I feel like we have a bit of an advantage because, um, you know, the children of Israel, as um, uh, difficult as they were, um, when they had David leading them, they said, Saul has killed uh, thousands, but David, ten thousands. Pastor John is really an amazing uh, leader um, to uh, guide us through this transition that is God-directed. So it doesn't take as much faith for me to be a Joshua or Caleb because of the strength of our leadership. And I know not everyone knows him, but um, we're really in a, a strong uh, transition to do, you know, what God, I hope, is going to bring some excitement, uh, re reveal that uh, to you in terms of uh, what he's going to do here and in Hawaii as well. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Well, um, I think we're going to ask the worship team to come on up um, and close us in a song. And it's the song that we were going to do at the very end of our beginning worship set. But it's all about God never failing. And let that be, let that be the truth of the faith that exists in your heart. That God, he's the creator and he's the redeemer. Every place that he is at, he is constantly creating. He is constantly redeeming. So God will never fail. Amen? Come on. Say it like you mean it. God's not going to fail. Amen? Why don't you go ahead, stand to your feet, and let's close our time in worship together.